Hey everybody, thank you for joining me in this bash series. In this episode, we're going to take a look at compound conditionals, which means multiple conditionals that ultimately evaluate to true or false. So we have a conditional over here, true or false, and then a logical operator, and then another conditional. So the logical operators are and and or. So and both have to be true, or one or the other has to be true in order for the entire expression or the compound conditional to evaluate to true. So that's a lot of words, sorry, but we're gonna just jump in and go through some examples. So you should like probably check out the previous episode where we built out this crap. Pretty much what we're gonna do is we're gonna modify this so that we're using the and operator instead of nested if statements. So what this is going to look like is you're going to say and and, and then another conditional right here. So we can take this conditional here, cut that, and paste it here. So pretty much we're gonna check how much money they have and their credit score, but what in the world? How are we gonna get the credit score if we're not reading that until down here? Pretty much what we can do is we can just take this line and we can move that up here, like that. And now we don't need this nested if statement at all. Now the thing you should know though is that when we have those nested if statements, we can be a little bit more specific about what is happening, such as saying that you do not have the credit score. So without the if statements, it's gonna be a little bit more difficult to say something like that, unless you have another if statement to check the value, but that kind of defeats the purpose. So anyways, let's just get rid of that. And now what we'll do is we'll just say, you are approved. You can see that it's a little bit more general. And if something doesn't work out, then we'll just say, try again later. And then maybe we could print out a report of all their different values to basically summarize what's wrong. Also, that makes it sound like it's broken. Let's say, try again after you improve your money. Go get a job, loser. Perfect. All right, let's try this, see if it works. Probably won't. So let's run it. How many dollars do you have? We'll say 9,001. What is your credit score? 671. You're approved. So... We can do this with different inputs to see what happens. Let's say this first one is true. So we have over $9,000. What's our credit score? Let's say this one is false. So we'll say zero. Try again after you improve your dollars. <laughs> Go get a job loser. All right, cool, let's try it again. Let's say this one's false now and this one's true. So how many dollars do you have? Five, what's your credit score? and we still get the same output, try again after you improve your money. Let's try it one more time where they're both false. So how many dollars? Five, what's your credit score? Five. You can see we get that same output for all three of those scenarios where either one is true and the other's false, or the first one's false and the next one's true, or they are both false. In order for this section to be executed, they both have to evaluate to true. And that is how the AND operator works. Now you can mix compound conditionals and nested if statements. So for example, you could go in here and say if, and let's say we're gonna use square brackets this time, and we'll say name is not equal to Caleb, then you're approved. Else, We'll just say, we really do not like Caleb's around here. Just as an example, it's kind of stupid, I know, but basically you could, in theory, combine this into this long conditional here, or you can have a nested if statement, if that's easier, or you need to be a little bit more specific. And then we'll just end our if statement like so. All right, so now if both of these are true, so we have over $9,000 and our credit score is really high, it says you're approved automatically, and that is because I totally forgot to get the name variable. So let's go ahead and read that as well. So we'll say read, what is your name, first name, and we'll put that inside of the name variable. Let's try this again. How many dollars you got? What is your credit score? 5,000. What is your first name? We'll go with Caleb. And it says, we really do not like Caleb's around here. Man, Caleb's would, plural, yeah, Caleb's. Wow, we're learning all kinds of things, including proper English. So that's, again, stupid example, but just wanted to show you that that is indeed possible. We're gonna get rid of that and take it back to what it was. The other one is or, which is the pipes right under the delete key. And in this situation, either of these can be true. So we could have zero dollars, 
but a credit score of 671. And that's still going to give us an approval. Or we could have a ton of money and a terrible credit score and we still get approved. They could also both be true. So we can have a ton of money and a really high credit score and we're approved. So that was a lot of jumping around, but when possible, I like to show those different paths, you know, true, 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 false, false, true, and false, false, just to see what can happen. Helps get you a better understanding of how it works. Can take a little bit of time and it's kind of annoying typing in the same numbers over and over again, but get some good practice. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, suggestions, or maybe your favorite theme park, drop it in the comment section below. Thank you for watching. Peace out.